Hi. A while back, I was missing my ex, and I knew enough that contacting her would be heading in the wrong direction. So I got it into my head that instead, I would contact her sister to go for tea. Welcome back to another episode of Hug Me, I'm Insane. My name is Perry Johnson. Today, I'm talking about insane thinking. So what do I mean by insane thinking? Okay, well, to state the obvious, insane thinking is any thought processes or any ideation or any whatever that goes through our heads, which we are too ashamed to want to talk about. We're embarrassed by the fact that we're having these thoughts or I think more to the point, we're concerned that if people knew what was going on in our heads, that they would reject us, that our families would disown us if they knew what we were thinking, that our friends would turn their backs on us forever if they could see inside of our heads. Our partners would leave us, our employers would fire us, society would cast us out, and we would be alone in the wilderness to fend for ourselves, and therefore we would die. That is, of course, what the fear tells us. That is the base fear that ultimately, if we're judged, we'll be rejected. If we're rejected, we'll be cast out into the wilderness and have to fight for ourselves. And so that plays into a very base fear for most of us. It's the fear of being rejected, fear of being judged, and the fear of subsequently being rejected. And so I, uh, like anybody, have my share of insane thinking. And I alluded to one of those in, in the intro. Um, I think I may have even talked about that one in, in a prior episode. But that one always comes to mind because, I mean, <laughs> what could go wrong? Um, and just the way that my brain plays games with me and tells me that you know, ideas that I have are actually in my best interest. Um, and that how a lot of the time I'll be convinced in that moment that that actually is a really good idea. Another good example is feeling dissed or, or feeling angry with somebody and, and um, indulging in revenge fantasies. Um, all the things that we would do to that person because we're hurting and all the ways that we would hurt them back. And we would, and usually if you're like me, the, the fantasy involves hurting them back twice as hard as they've hurt us. And some of those things that I have going on in my head in terms of getting revenge on the people that wronged me, um, date back to childhood. Um, and a lot of the trauma therapy that I'm currently working through and probably will continue to work through, uh, go back pretty far. Um, I think that one of the aspects of what I term to be insane thinking, because if you think about it, the fact that I'm still spinning on something that happened to me in the, in the playground in grade seven or, or whenever, I mean, that's pretty crazy. That was quite a while ago, and uh, you would not be remiss to say, dude, get over it, and you're not wrong. The problem is, is that the trauma remains in me somatically. The trauma is held in my body, and and I never dealt with it in a healthy way, and so it gets stuck there, and I, and I relive it over and over again. If we have enough experiences in which we don't properly assimilate those experiences in healthy ways in 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 the way that animals do in nature so for example the well the example that i always use are, are, are ducks if you ever watch ducks fighting and, and and when the fight is over and they're and they're moving apart they shake themselves off they shake off their tail feathers and all of that and they're literally somatically releasing the stress of that encounter from their bodies so that they're able to go about their day-to-day -day in, a, in a healthy way and don't carry that trauma with them. They shake it off in their bodies and, and it's done. And we don't do that as human beings, at least not uh, in, in modern society, we don't. Modern Western society, I should say. And so 
a lot of this stuff gets stuck in our heads and, and we get these ideas going through our minds that are of questionable sanity. And it doesn't even have to be uh, a, a tr reliving traumatic events. It can be all manner of things going through our minds. But I would say that most of the time, insane thinking, when we look at, back at it objectively, we're able to, as I say, because it's objective, see the insanity of the thoughts, and we're too ashamed to want to talk about that with anybody. We don't think that people are going to take that stuff on board or that they're going to accept us, at least not most people. And so we're left with stuffing those things and not talking about them. And I think this is where the problem comes in. It's like anything that we're not talking about, that we're terming to be unhealthy and that we're, and that we're vilifying ourselves for. And insane thinking is certainly... Uh, common to everybody. I think where we get off track is thinking that we're somehow crazier in our thinking than everybody else. There is no way to to judge that objectively. There really isn't. It's if you could see into everybody's head, well, then you would know, but you can't. What is true is that as crazy as the thoughts might get in your head, there is probably somebody out there with even more insane thoughts. And again, this is going to be subjective because who's to say what is crazier than the thought that you're having? I mean, you would. And so I can say with a lot of confidence that as, as insane as the stuff that goes in your mind, there is somebody that is having way crazier thoughts than you are. That may not be a great comfort to a lot of you who have persistently insane thoughts. And this is the thing, this is the, this is the area, it's, it's the persistent, it's the, it, it's the persistence of this stuff where we can really start going off course and, and, and becoming unstable. And if you're having that kind of an experience where you're having persistently disturbing thoughts, then my answer to that is to please go and talk to somebody. My answer to any kind of insane thinking is to talk to somebody. The, the key here is to find somebody who is safe for you. And this is one of the reasons why we pay mental health professionals, that we're paying those people for their professionalism. And by that, I mean that what we talk about in that room stays in that room. Um, there are exceptions, and those have to do with the safety of children. And um, if we admit to homicide, um, there might be one or two other things. But for the most part, you can go in and talk to a counselor or a psych or somebody like that, a social worker, and get this stuff out and feel confident that these thoughts that are plaguing you are just that, they're thoughts. Where it becomes trickier is when we don't talk about them and they spin and they feed into themselves and they become obsessive. And the danger is that if we're leaving those thoughts long enough, and not talking about them, there's a danger that in our minds we could start formulating plans to act on them. And insane thoughts lead to insane action. And nobody wants that, really. Unless, of course, you're addicted to chaos, but that's a whole other episode. The thrust of what I'm getting at here is that whatever is happening in your mind is okay. What's important to understand is that you're validating what is happening in your mind with somebody who is safe for you. Now, for some people, that might be your best friend, and maybe that person is safe for you. I think it's important, though, that you do have trust with that person and really can say that they're not talking about what's going on in your head to other people. 
And this comes back to the need for professionalism. I think even with our friends, when things become too outrageous, sometimes people will engage in gossip simply because they're given information that's too juicy to want to hold back talking about with somebody else. This is the nature of gossip. I don't, I don't think I'm saying anything here that isn't obvious to most of us. But for those of us who have any doubt, if you're really not sure that the stuff that's going through your mind is going to be safe with the person that you're talking to, just stop talking about it with them and go find somebody who will be safe for you. And know you're not the only one having crazy ass thoughts. You're really not. It's okay. I'm right with you. Believe me, I'm right with you. So I'm going to leave it here. It's not a terribly long episode, but I'm just coming back from a bit of a hiatus. And so I'm just getting back on the horse. And one of the things that I want to do is I want to start inviting people onto the show to talk about some of these topics. And so if you'd like to come on the show and talk about some of your crazy thinking and more importantly, the methods that you use to deal with that crazy thinking, or maybe you don't have methods and you want to come on and talk to me about it, I'd be more than happy to do that. You can email me at hugmeiminsane at gmail.com. Drop me a note, let me know what it is that's on your mind. And if you want to come on the show and talk about it, I'd love to have you. And so I'll leave it here till the next time. I'll see you soon.